Let's start by using the density of events on one channel to control the density of events on the other. I'm using X to control one voice and Y to control another. I'm molting the X gate output to the Y clock input so that the Y channel is clocked by the gate sequencing of the X channel. Let's start with a gate output that is quite regular, one gate every two steps. We can see in here that the Y channel clocks along in a regular fashion, at one half the speed of the X channel. Note that practically any change we make to the X channel's gate output will also alter the Y channel, changing the snake pattern for example. Right now we always have 8 Y channel events per 16 X channel events, but if we alter the gate programming of the X channel they can become less regular and go out of phase with the X channel. Let's try clustering all the X gate events in one portion of the grid. I'm turning on the gates for the bottom eight locations. Now let's use a slower clock to occasionally change X's direction for a non-repeating pendulum motion. We patch to X mod and engage fun.mod.direction. As the X channel passes through this cluster of gates, we get more density in both channels' outputs. Different types of clusters happen with different snake patterns and different programming. Let's change this order of operations to a dialog. We'll molt the YCV output to the XCV input. Let's try some things on the CV row. Location will cause jumps within the snake pattern. Snake will cause changes in snake pattern with each gate output. Of course, we can also molt the XCV to the YCV input and cause both channels to location jump each other. I find that the best results here are found when the gate outputs are sparse. Thank <laughs> you.